make sure they are balanced. Okay, what's a good leader? Who can be a good leader? And he said, give me a blank look, shrug their shoulders. I don't know. <laughs> My mom wanted me to. <laughs> you need to have passion. And I believe that all of you have already known a lot about CASPA, about today's event, as well as the Intel's research program. Um, and I also believe that a lot of you are expecting our first keynote speech for a while. Now, um, it is my great honor to introduce our first speaker, the CEO and co-founder of Ivy Mac School, Mr. Shane Wei. Honestly, I don't know where to start introducing him because there is so much to say. I will just tell you a story, a true story that really touched me. Several decades ago, a student, an international student from the mainland of China, came to the Bay Area to study. As the most outstanding student in high school, he applied for all the Ivy League school at that point, but he was turned down by most of them. Why? Not because he was not excellent enough, but because he was an international student. Most schools talk to him, saying that you are really great, but we cannot admit you because we don't know whether you could financially support yourself. And that's why he was turned down. Finally, he was really frustrated, and he made a last shot when the University of Pennsylvania admission director came to the Bay Area for a seminar. So after the seminar, he talked to the admission director for half an hour. That half an hour changed his whole life. University of Pennsylvania admitted this exceptional student and provided all financial support. And that student is our speaker today, Mr. Wei. I believe that you could look, look at his bio yourself. So I also believe that this is kind of the inspiration that inspired him to open Ivy Mac School several decades later. As the CEO of the school, Mr. Wei is responsible for setting the overall direction and the product strategy for Ivy Max. His industry experience includes 24 years in advanced software design, 15 years as a senior executive, and a decade of college counseling expert. Mr. Wei had a bachelor and a master in computer science and engineering from the University of Pennsylvania. Today, his topic is building academic strength and leadership. Now, let's welcome Mr. Wei. Thank you, Christy. And uh, thank you, Caspa and uh, the Bay Area parents and students for sharing your Sunday afternoon with me here and with other experts who can perhaps lend some help in your relentless pursuit of getting the children really to the upper echelons of society. Uh, I, I know Ivy Max is, is in the business of preparing many of our Bay Area students and students across uh, the nation. In fact, in, from many parts of the United States and, and now from other parts of the globe as well. Uh, to give them the opportunity to go to the best schools in the U.S. at, at all levels, uh, high schools, college, and graduate schools. So I'm really glad today I have this uh, brief moment to share with you some of our experiences and, uh, and some of my personal observations. Uh, today we're in the Intel Science Auditorium, so uh, I wanted to really look at the Intel Science Talent Search and many of the science competitions as possible ways to also help uh, uh, guide our kids, guide our children on, on a path to their future success. We've already seen from some of the earlier slides and uh, one of the early speakers' introduction what Intel Science Competition is all about. The STS, or Intel Science Talent Search, is all about. Uh, what I have today probably show some of the other things, interesting numbers and facts about the competition and about its winners. And from that, we can look at uh, the connection between 
winning these kinds of scientific competition honors and uh, and you know some something else that parents are also interested in Ivy League admissions and uh, and perhaps there are, there are a few lessons we can take away from all this okay so I'm going to look at the Intel Science Talent Search from kind of the Ivy Max angle or from uh, the educational angle all right. What are some of the latest statistics? We saw some from earlier slides, but I have even more numbers to, to share, okay? This year, there were 1,712 entries in the competition. And out of that group, 190 high school seniors became, uh, or 190 high schools were represented, uh, and even one overseas American school. Uh, of course, every year we have 300 finalists. So based on these years' uh, entries, we know about 17% of them were selected as finalists, uh, semi-finalists. And again, 40 finalists, that's 2.35%. Do you guys know what Harvard and Stanford admission rates were this year from 2013? Anybody? I think Ivy Max have, have some special small awards for, from, uh, from my questions during the spe speech. So anybody who had right answers, uh, ra raise your hand. Do you guys know what Harvard's and Stanford's admission rates were roughly? I hear 6%. Who said 5 point some percent? Okay, the, the, the parent in, in yellow and the mom in blue here, okay? Uh, I, I think we have some of our staff in the back. They have some small awards for you guys. That's right. Harvard and Stanford and Princeton, all three universities' admission rates from 2013 were actually lower than 6% for the first time in their school's history. Okay? In fact, for almost all Ivy League schools and Stanford and MIT, if you look at some of the top 10 schools, ever since 2008, almost every single one of them has been admitting fewer and fewer students. Now, not just lower and lower admission rates because of the exploding applicant numbers. Uh, in fact, over the last five years, every single one of those 10 schools I just mentioned, Ivy League, eight colleges, plus Stanford, plus MIT, they have admitted fewer in absolute numbers for their freshman class. Okay, so that's how the competition has gotten hotter and hotter every year. Now, so as you can see, the Intel Science Talent Search is even more selective, more competitive, right? Only 2.35% made it to the finals. And of course, the, the research covers a variety of subjects, including many of the leading and popular science fields. Now, it's also competitive in terms of the effort involved, okay? many, many years of research for many of these students. And um, as you can see here, I have the top three winners as well as the final uh, 40 um, shown here in the pictures. Something else very interesting. Okay? We, we probably all know STS is very competitive, very prestigious. It's highly regarded not just for it's alumni is winning Nobel Prizes and uh, Fields Medals, as, as uh, the previous speaker has already alluded to. Five National Medals of Science, 11 MacArthur Foundation Fellowships. But one thing very interesting, over the years, even though there are many, one of the Intel Science Talent Search participants has won an Oscar. Okay, this is my next question challenge for you. Does anybody know who she is? Anyone? You guys don't watch movies? You only participate in science competitions? That's not enough. Portland, she gets an award. Have you guys seen her? You must have, come on kids. She became famous because of her Star Wars movies. Remember? Princess? Okay, so uh, for, for the adults in the audience, 
she won her Oscar for one of the recent movies, Black Swan. Okay, and in 1999, when she was a high school senior, she was also one of the Intel STS participants. Okay, and she went on to go to Harvard and got her bachelor's degree in psychology from Harvard University. Now, at the time when she decides to go to Harvard, uh, she already had uh, at least a dozen or so movie credits behind her name. So many, many in Hollywood said, gosh, you must be crazy, you're stupid. Why do you want to go to Harvard? She, she responded, she said, I'd rather be smart than a famous movie star. Okay, so she still uh, went on to go to college and, and got her degree uh, from Harvard. Anyway, so as you can see, the Intel Science Competition is truly for everyone, okay? Not just the nerdy students, but many of the brainy beauties as well, including uh, Ms. Latney Corman. All right, um, there are many other things that are interesting and uh, to be noted. One, uh, Intel CEO actually once said, and, and I think I should really point this out. I don't know if it, oh, it works. See, he says those winners are usually or typically students with parents who are very involved. Okay, so this is a, this is a warning. I, I, I'm so glad today to see in the audience Many parents with kids uh, in elementary schools. I, I see. I see quite a few uh, six, seven-year-olds, seven, eight-year-olds uh, kids in elementary schools get a, an early start. Okay, uh, parents, you need to be involved. You need to provide guidance. So you need to provide directions. In many cases, uh, you don't do the work for your kids, but you do need to get involved. Okay, and it's a, it, and it's a tremendous amount of fun to be involved doing these projects with your children. Okay, um, and according to many of the surveys among the winners, many of the research projects have involved years of research. In fact, uh, for many of them, more than a thousand hours of collect time uh, doing very serious scientific research work in the lab, okay? So it's not uh, an easy task for sure. The most interesting part about this year's statistics, I look through the numbers, I look at the names, where they're from, their characteristics, okay? And I've noted several interesting facts. One, it's a very geographically concentrated competition, okay? And California happens to be one of the most crowded states for this competition, and perhaps because Intel has been sponsoring it, so especially in Northern California. Okay, we can see uh, out of the 140 summer finalists, uh, or, or out of the 300, 140 are from California and New York. Okay, so you know these two states produced most of the summer finalists. Okay, a big majority, in fact, a big chunk, uh, close to half, and 12 of the finalists, of the final 40, are also from these two states, okay? And that's pretty much true almost for the last decade. New York traditionally has been one of the largest states uh, sending winners to these competitions. California has caught up. So this, this year, California is, I think, only one, I think New York State has, uh, uh, six or seven, and California is right behind, okay? And of course, if you extend to some of the other eastern states, and then if you rope in Texas, uh, those states I listed there almost supplied eight out of 10 of the summer finalists in, in the 300 group, okay? So as you can see, it, it's pretty much concentrated in very few states, okay? And then of course, for Californians, out of the 47 summer finalists from California, Big Chuck is from Northern Cal, okay? 35 are from the Bay Area. And that's how much competition you have, 
Okay, I know we, we probably have some from, from Southern Cal here in the audience, by the way, today. We do have people from Southern Cal visiting here. Uh, so you guys have an easier competition, actually, in Southern California. Okay, maybe there are more movie stars and other famous people there. But students who are passionate about science, a huge concentration is here, located right here locally. Okay? So for those of you kids in the audience, get an early start on this. You will have a huge advantage. Okay? By the time you are sophomore or junior in, in high school, uh, it's going to be pretty tough, pretty difficult competition uh, around you. Okay? So not just geographically, school-wise, among the 300 summer finalists, only 23 high schools uh, produce three or more winners. Okay. Now, my next question to the audience. <coughs> Which Bay Area high school produced the most summer finalists? <laughs> I knew a lot of Lindbergh and Gong High. What is that? Mount Vista. Okay. Hawker had six this year. Number one in the Bay Area. Okay. What's the next school? I know many people know Hawker because Hawker is a perennial school producing a lot of Intel semi-finalists and finalists even. I bet the there's probably not one person in the audience, besides Ivy Mac staff, because I think they have already seen my slides before. Um, I don't think anyone knows who the second place school is. I still hear a lot of South Bay schools, but gosh, I'm surprised. Parents do pay attention to these numbers. It's Dory Valley High School in San Ramon. The school is only four or five years old. Okay, they have five members this year. Okay, a brand new school. They just recently had four, four years of class in their high school, in fact. I think the school is only, what, four or five years old? For, for, those, of, for those parents who, who know about the school. It's in Saramo in one of the new housing developments because there, there's a huge concentration of South Bay engineers and professionals, families moving into that area. Uh, they have some new schools and they all have become very, very uh, high achieving schools. Okay, uh, what are the other top five schools in the Bay Area? The, these are probably familiar names. They are Lindbergh, Saratoga, and Gong Hai. Okay. So this year, the top five high schools in Northern California. Uh, just between them, I, I think you're already looking at uh, more than 20 persons in the Southern Final Okay, So school-wise, it's very concentrated as well. Okay. Now the next fact is even more interesting. And I think it's very relevant uh, for us to, to really figure out why. Ethnically. It's a very concentrated <laughs> competition. Okay, among, among the 17, more than 1,700 entries, overwhelming majority of the entries come from Asian students. Okay? No. Uh, nobody has dared to put a number or rate on that because that might be too sensitive. But if we just look at uh, some of the higher rounds, of the competition, okay? In the summer final round, out of the 300, 179 are Asian, okay, that's 60%. 113 of that 60% are Chinese Americans. Okay, that's 38%, more than one out of three. So every one out of three out of the summer final group is Chinese American, okay? Now, if we look at California, it's 47. That ratio gets even higher. It's 77% Asian and more than half Chinese. Okay, so as you see from the two pie charts, right, the darker part is more than three quarters for California, 
And out of the whole semifinal group, it's a big chunk to over half. Okay? However, as you advance higher and higher into the competition, uh, very pictorially, do you notice the darker part gets what? Smaller and smaller and smaller. And when you look at the final of this group, it's only about half Asian now. Only less than one out of three Chinese American. And when you look at the top 10 winners, one Chinese placing six, and two Indians at nines and tens. Why? Have you, have you guys thought about why that's the case? <laughs> Not as creative. Okay, I hear one. <laughs> At least in Chinese, right? Zi 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 mean, which is very important. Okay. Uh, what other factors are at play here? Politically, <laughs> there's probably some of that. But if you, well, um, that. That may be true. I mean, there are a lot of other discussions. We can spend hours on this, uh, but I think we, we're not on those topics today. But just, you know, if, if you really pay attention, if you really look at all of what's involved, right? Look at the SSP board. Okay? If you look at the board of trustees for SSP, all 15 of them, from the trustee chair to every single member, is what? Black. Right? So, for you aspiring young students, get involved in community service, get involved in politics, get involved in policy making as well, in addition to get involved in science research, okay? Every single one of the 15 board members is, you know, Johnson, Smellers, and Smiths, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, but not only that, okay, I think there's, there's something very relevant, something very easy for us to address as students anyway, and as parents to a certain extent, to really give them the opportunities, give them the platform to improve, to make sure going forwards that darker representation stays as you move higher and higher into the final rounds of competition, okay? There's a huge difference between making it to the semi-finals and making it to the top 10 winners. And to be the number one, number two, number three. As you can see, all top three, in fact, top five are Caucasian Americans this year, right? When they enter the competition, it's all what? Paper-based, right? It's your scientific report, their application form, describing their activities, their grades, their SAT scores, the teacher's recommendations. So everything at that stage, sorry, it's still paper-based, okay? And Asia, some open house days when everybody's invited from all over the globe to visit these 40 finalists' project presentations. And they have to talk to the public and really present and really sell their projects, right? In order to win the final competition. So all of the judging at the highest level are based on the students' presentation skills, not how smart they are or uh, how high their SAT score was, so on and so forth. Okay, so really make sure when, when you are involved in your children's education, when you make certain decisions, make sure they are balanced. Okay, the decisions have to be balanced. And you cannot pay less attention to other things. They, the, the students have to be academically high achieving, have to really do good scientific research work. But at the same time, they need to become a better speaker, become a better presenter, promoter for their own good, for their own work. Okay, so that that's some really important message to take away today. If you haven't remembered anything else, make sure throughout high school, 
your students are involved in other activities and really are well versed in presenting themselves in, in you know, if I may use the word, selling themselves. Because many of our children don't do that well enough and in the end, they suffer. Not because they're not good, not because they're not smart enough, but because they cannot present themselves uh, the best way they could. Okay? So really pay attention to that. Now, how, how to pick the appropriate research topic is also very crucial. I've highlighted uh, a few high-level points here. Obviously, anything trivial, anything easy will not cut it. Okay? For science competitions like Intel STS, you have to pick something that's very advanced. Now, of course, to be successful, you need to make sure the topic is also interesting and it's not something that, that will really challenge you uh, individually. Okay? Intel STS is an individual-based competition. So you better make sure any topic you pick, as, as the second bullet points show, has to be something that somewhat original and um, not have covered by others. Okay? Every year, there are many categories in the competition. Some categories are very crowded. Okay? If there are many student entries in that category, what does that mean to your chance of success? You have a lower rate of success, right? So make sure when you evaluate a topic, pick the appropriate one so that you have a better chance to succeed in the end. Okay? But when you decide on that topic, don't pick something too broad or too open-ended. Okay? If it's too open-ended, you probably we're not going to be able to finish your project and really have tangible and, and substantial results to show okay, in your final report. And if it's too broad, you're not going to have enough time in your junior year and senior year uh, to even do the adequate amount of work to, to be able to achieve something. Okay? You, you know that. You're going to have to spend a lot of time learning background information, research about background information. So it's a very involved, very challenging task. Don't pick something that's too big or too broad, okay? All right, that's that. There is a camp I have to put in the plug at UC Berkeley this summer. It's specifically designed to help seventh graders, eighth graders, freshmen, and sophomore in high school to really look at all these science camps, science research camps for the summer and how to be best prepared, how to uh, raise your writing skills specifically for applying to these top tier research science camps. Okay? And they will also look at science competitions like Intel, like Siemens, and many of the other top tier competitions and make sure students' scientific reports are written appropriately for these competitions. Okay? So for those of you who are interested, you can probably stop by the desk uh, find out what the Berkeley Camp is all about. It's specifically designed to help students enter these competitions and get it into scientific research. Okay?